Hey everyone, I'm Carly Joseph, the Assistant Director of Residence Life. Hello guys, my name is Andrew Underwood. I serve as Dean of Student Life. Today, Andrew and I will be talking about zones. So zones, we're going to start off with the, the basic definition uh, that we've developed. A zone is a section of a residence hall's rooms and residence that is designated to a specific RA to impact in a positive way. The RA is not limited to, but is directly responsible for certain aspects when it comes to their zones. So to break that down a little bit more, what it looks like if you're, for example, if you're in Hutton and you are an RA and your room is uh, 114, the way to be broken down is you'd be responsible for, or your zone would be the residence in your suite, 110, and also the suite right next to you, 120. So there, there's about 16 residents in each zone in a Hutton or a Kleist. But I want to break it down a little bit more to say that that's not just who you're limited to and who you serve or impact, but it's who you're directly responsible for. To kind of piggyback off of what Andrew said, zones are really a focus that we wanted to give RAs to kind of set the expectation of um, how we want you to be intentional and impactful with your residents. But we really don't want that to also be a barrier. I know as we had these kind of start over the last year and kind of be a new thing um, in residence life that many felt like that meant that they couldn't get to know the rest of their building and we don't want uh, zones to restrict you. Uh, you have all of campus to impact and reach but if that is too daunting uh, you also have your zone and that way you have maybe 16 to 30 residents that you can really get to know have an impact and also help make their residence life experience really good at UC. To reiterate a little bit about zones, again it is a section of residence halls, rooms, and residence that is designated to uh, you as an RA to impact in a positive way. Um, I know you probably feel like we're saying this a lot, but an RA is not limited to this section of the uh, building and um, you are directly responsible for certain aspects of their zone. To kind of break that down, we're going to talk about the certain aspects and then also what our philosophy behind zones are. I'm going to get to these certain aspects and what that means here in a second, but I'm first on focus on the philosophy of zones and really the background of where and how they were developed. Zones were modeled after the biblical principle of discipleship. Jesus had 12 disciples that he led. They went out and taught and what they had learned from him, they made disciples of their own and really spread the gospel. And that pattern continues today. Um, likewise, Carly and I lead the team of RDs and we share information and focus on what we want to do with the program and information that we need shared to our RAs and the students. Uh, they go back to their buildings, share, share information with you guys and uh, we take it from from them and you guys need to take it on to your students and that's where it kind of comes from us passing along the information as far as being intentional with residents that's the other aspect of zones is we want you to be intentional and seek out the residents with the information that we're sharing now, this is why we designate zones for two main reasons one it allows you to focus on an achievable goal zones help make it easy for you because it gives you a specific area to focus on now, like we said before, that doesn't mean you can forget all of your other residents in the building, no. But could you imagine trying to pursue everyone in your building? For some of you guys, that's 200 plus people, and that's just really impossible. That'd be like asking one RD to be the RD of all 70 Res Life staff members. It's just not possible and very little would be accomplished. So that's, so that's why we try to spread it out so every RA has like we said, a zone to target on. The second reason is we want to go, want to ensure that no resident goes without being pursued. Every RA um, has a zone, and if every RA does their job and seeks out their zone, then not a single resident would go without someone on campus being intentional with them, seeking them out to share information, to see how their day is going, just to say hi, to know their name. Those are all reasons why we have zones and a really a positive way that you can impact the students we have on campus. If every RA does their job and seeks out their zone, then not a single resident would go without someone on campus being intentional with them. When you're intentional with someone, you're telling them that person that you care about them and their well-being and that you want to help them. To reiterate again with uh, a reason or a philosophy behind zones is that we don't want any resident to go unsought, um, is you're gonna have residents 
that are really needy and want you as an RA to help them. And they're gonna have residents that uh, really don't want any part of it. You're gonna have both of them. Um, but that's part of you as an RA, your leadership skills, you get to develop that and support both parties of students that you're gonna have and how to manage and balance both type of residents. To move on from the philosophies, uh, we're gonna hit on the certain aspects. So these are certain aspects that you are directly responsible for. And so after going through the philosophies, you should be able to figure out that the RA's ultimate job, as far as the zones go, is that you're responsible for knowing the residents and you're responsible for sharing information to those residents. Now there's, we're gonna get into it as far as the examples here in a second, um, but there's a, there's a balance that we're gonna talk about also with set expectations versus uh, challenge by choice. Again, this goes back to attitude and effort that you have with your zone, as you can make it as minimal and surface level as you want, or if you choose to be really intentional and go into depth with these students, you could have a greater impact in their lives and in their time on campus. Um, but some clear ex expectations we're gonna set are uh, knowing the residents but by name. Uh, you have zone meetings or one-on-ones with them. You're gonna minister roommate and suite mate agreements at the beginning of each semester. Uh, you have to share department initiatives, information that we need to get out. And then you're also responsible for fire and severe weather drills. So to kind of break that down a little bit about knowing your residents, we wanted to give you some examples of what an expectation is versus a challenge. For instance, an expectation would be to know a name of everyone in your, or to know all the names of everyone in your zone. Uh, but we would really like you to be challenged to know the entire building. As well as an expectation is to say hello anytime you see a student from your zone. But we challenge you to invite someone from your zone to dinner once a week. Another example would be um, to plan a program for the building, but we challenge you to survey your zone on what they'd like to see in the residence hall. And we kind of saw this a little bit last year. It was really cool to see some of the RAs who took this initiative and were really challenged uh, to get to know their zone, to see if, I know one person gave out um, a survey to see if they were being annoying to their zone and what that looked like. And so we challenge you to think outside the box. We don't want this to restrict you to where you feel like you can only do the expectations, but we're challenging you to go above and beyond and do something unique and creative that's really gonna matter to your zone that you're designated to. So zone meetings are something that happens at the beginning of the semester. Um, Oh, they're also referred to as one-on-ones occasionally, but towards the beginning of each semester, you as an RA are responsible to meet individually or as a room mate pair with the people in your zone to review policies that are related to your building, but then also all campus. And the really importance of, importance of this is because this could be the first, maybe only time, that residents hear certain policies. It could be anywhere from uh, certain parking policies for the building to them knowing that we are an alcohol-free campus and that it's not allowed in the residence halls. So it's really important that that information is covered uh, with each student um, so they're aware of all the policies that we uh, can enforce. It also helps them because you're serving the residents so they don't get in trouble. They could just innocently not know a policy and take their girlfriend up to their room not knowing that it's against policy. So it's really important that you uh, review all those with them. Another aspect of it is that the RDs and USRA will work together to document to make sure that each uh, resident on campus has participated in a zone meeting. Another aspect of your zone meetings is also to administer your roommate and suite mate agreements. Obviously, if you live in a community style residence hall, you will only have your roommate agreements. But for those of you that are an RA in a suite mate or in a suite style hall, you will have suite mate agreements as well. As an RA, you're going to administer these to your roommate, suite mates within your zone, and within that, you're going to be able to walk through the form with them. Um, for instance, there's going to be things about how they're going to deal with conflict, how they're going to cohabitate um, together, and how they're going to compromise on things if their issues do arise. After the agreements have been issued with the residents, the RA will make sure that the residents sign them. We don't want them to just sign them immediately. We want them to really think out this, talk through with their suite mates, and you as the RA within that zone can help kind of facilitate that. 
Um, these agreements, especially this upcoming year, are very important uh, because we will always refer back to this before any room change is considered. So we want to make sure that they really know how important these are. We also want you to know that you may be, if there is an issue and they do want to change rooms, that we may also talk to you about how they said they were going to resolve. Because this also, for those of you that live in suites, this also could be something going on within your suite. And we want you to know kind of what's going on and be really up to date with how to help kind of facilitate these issues um, before they have to result in a room change. Part of our responsibility at the university is to be able to help people resolve conflict in a good way. And these agreements really help facilitate that. So I'm going to hop down to the examples of information that you're kind of responsible to share. Anything from housing selection and filling out contracts, roommate selection and picking roommates. Anytime we have applications open like for res life, break forms, fundraising, food drive, any kind of events in the building. Those are all just some examples of information that we didn't want to make sure gets out to our students. So then whether you're in the office on duty or not, you're directly responsible for your zone. So I kind of just talk through like an example Let's say that you are on duty. The, the stuff that everyone's going to do for their building just because you're an RA is you're going to post memos about stuff. You're going to stop people as they walk through the lobby and talk to them about what's going on. Um, you're expected to talk to people in the hallways as you're walking halls and you see someone in the hallway. Just tell them, tell them about an event or ask them if they filled out their contract yet. Just kind of the normal as you're doing your job. You see people, you're going to talk to them. But while you're on duty, maybe for your, for your zone, you're going to be more intentional and seek them out. So you could do it by texting them, sending them an email, DM them on Instagram, go, or even go knock on their door and tell them that you had this really cool information that you wanted to share that would help them um, in the long run. Now let's say then it's on your night off. So either you just worked and it's the next night and you know that you didn't talk to this one resident in your zone, uh, but you always see them when you're brushing your teeth at night. Well, maybe be a little more intentional that you go brush your teeth that night and tell them about whatever information that you need to share with them. So even if you're not working, it's still your responsibility as you go throughout your day to share things with your zone. And so that's kind of a basic example about sharing with your zone whether you're on or off duty. Now I'm not saying that it's your, your life's purpose to make sure that everything is shared, but it, it is expected that uh, you, try to, you try your best and hardest to reach these uh, residents in your zone. Another important way that you'll utilize your zone is with fire drills and inclement weather. RAs are responsible for getting the residents in their zone to the right location for fire drills in severe weather situations. If the RAs are not in the building, other RAs must be able to adapt and cover other zones. It's not to, if your co-RA is not there, it's not to just be like, oh, well, their zone's not going to get out of the building or whatever. You definitely need to be able to adapt within that. Also, uh, each residence hall's severe weather and fire drills are different, so the specifics of your residence hall emergency plan will be covered during NC orientation. Thank you all for listening to our uh, presentation on zones, and we are looking forward to seeing you in the fall. Uh, please make sure to go over and do your discussion post on zones.